By this definition? No. <laughs> Pop a Flamby's Advent Calendar. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another day on Papa Flamby's Advent Calendar. And we're going to do something really trivial today because we are going to prove that for all real numbers a and b, we have that the absolute value of a times b is the same as the absolute value of a times the absolute value of b. With this being the pure definition of the absolute value, let's try to make some sense of this formula right here because many people struggle with it, especially first years because of the second part of definition. So absolute value of x is either x if x is greater or equal to zero or either negative x if x is less than zero. This part might seem clear, but this part is weird because we know that the absolute value is going to result in something positive. So why do we have this negative right here? Well, I'm going to tell you. Using a little example, imagine we have the absolute value of negative 3. Well, this is going to result in positive 3. We all know that, but why? Because our argument is less than 0, meaning we are going to take negative of this argument. Negative, negative 3 is going to result in something positive, positive 3. There we go. With this out of the way, we can get started with the main proof. And for this, we have to consider three main cases. All good things come in packs of three. For example, a threesome or, I don't know, your family consisting of your mother, your dad, me, the papa and your dog. So, first case, A and B are both positive or zero. That's the first case. Second case, well, A and B are both negative and less case. Without loss of generality, we can just assume that one part is negative and the other one positive. Doesn't quite matter because you can just interchange this order here. Fact out negative one and then you have the other one negative and the first one positive. So, so it doesn't quite matter. Without loss of generality, A is going to be negative and B is going to be positive. Let's put it that way. Okay, let's start off with the first case. Case one. A and B are both greater or equal to zero. Well, what does it mean for this right here? Absolute value of A times B. Well, positive times positive is going to result in something positive. By this definition, we are just going to take the argument itself. So this is just A times B. Let's put this in parentheses, just for clarification purposes. A is positive, so the argument of A is just the same as the absolute value of A. B is positive, so just by the same argumentation with A, we just get the absolute value of B. And et voila, we are done with the first case. Now for the second case, A and B are strictly less than zero. Well, once again, we have A times B. Just like before, negative times negative is going to result in something positive. So this argument is positive, resulting in the argument itself, A times B. But here we are going to do something special. We are going to just multiply this thing by positive one, which is nothing but negative times negative one. So we have negative A times negative B. And you see by our assumption, A has been negative, meaning the absolute value of A is going to result in negative A. This is what we have here. So this is just the absolute value of A. Same thing here, B by assumption is just negative. So this thing right here is going to result in just absolute value of B. Second case cleared. Awesome. And now for the last case, the one without loss of generality. Case three, A is less than zero. B is greater or equal than zero. What is going to happen for this right here? A times B. Well, negative times positive is going to be negative. So we have negative A times B by this definition. No. <laughs> Timo just came in. I'm terribly sorry, but this video is such a good run. I'm not going to re-record it. Let's continue. So by this, by this definition, we had a negative argument. Absolute value of something negative is just a negative argument. So remember that. But we can put it in parentheses, negative A times B. And you see, A by definition has been negative, meaning negative A by this definition is just the absolute value of A. And well, B is positive, so clearly this is just the absolute value of B. And now we have covered all three cases, and I thank you guys for watching. I hope you did enjoy this little video. I'm going to put this black boy right here. The good old black boy, the, the QED boy. And well, up until the next video, have Flamble Day. I guess support the channel if you want shadows, videos. Just watch my videos. I really don't care. Love you guys. Appreciate you. And up until the next video, have a. Yeah. <sighs>
have an absolute value today because, well, guys, stay positive. Mathematics is cool. <laughs> what a nice ending. What a cool fucking message. <sighs> Please end my miserable life. I hope you get that reference. Ciao. Akira.